Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for spending time with me again today. I'm very excited because I have been planning a, a playlist of interviews with community managers uh, from Facebook for a while now. And Kathy has agreed to be the very, very first person, the very first community manager uh, to do the interview for me uh, for this series. So thank you, Kathy, for manifesting a new idea for me. I'm very excited uh, that you are part of this part of uh, me growing out my content in a new way. I appreciate it so very much. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me, Melanie. I'm excited to be here with you. Yay. So for everybody watching, uh, Kathy and I met in the, we met at uh, the community summit last year. Uh, could be the summit, probably most likely FCLL. Okay. Okay. Learning Labs. Or no, it was um, Com Combosite. Okay. Did we okay. do that? No. It was somewhere. <laughs> No, so I many actually, possibilities. <laughs> I actually think it the was the important thing is we met. <laughs> I know. And and it was quite interesting because we kind of spotted each other across the room and went, I want to spend more time with that one. Yeah. Well, I I saw what you were doing, your group, and it's like mm, bing, because I'm in the <laughs> textile type thing too. So it's like, yeah. Yes. yes. So, so uh, tell us a little bit more about your group, Kathy. Uh, you because you also have a textile group, uh, and mm -hmm. I love your group. I, I spend I spend quite a bit of time in your group, which is unusual because I don't normally shop outside of my 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 family. Yeah. Group. They keep me so busy, uh, and I absolutely love the quilts that I see in your group. So, will you tell us a little bit more about it? How did you start it? Why did you start it? And how did you grow it? Well, um, I didn't start it. I inherited this group from the founder. Okay. Um, although it was only it was only two or three years old at the time. And um, Linda Bards was the group founder. And she uh, it's my group is called One Block Wonder Quilt Forum, and it concentrates on one specific quilt technique, the One Block Wonder. And there's a series of books that were written by Maxine Rosenthal and some others that co-authored with her. And so we're strictly focused on this one technique. And so when Linda first discovered this, she didn't find any groups on Facebook about this technique. So she created one and it slowly grew from there. So when I inherited it, we were about 2,500, 3,000 people. Okay. And then she got involved in writing a new book with Maxine. So she got busy and I had admin experience. I came in from the gaming industry. I, that's where I learned. So I approached her and I said, listen, I know how to admin. I can help you do that part of the group and you can still be creative. So we kind of were partners for a while. And then she kind of got burnt out during when she was authoring her book. And so um, from doing that, it led her into other paths in her quilting career. And so she decided because she saw how, how good I was handling her group, she decided to just pass it on to me. And so that's what I did. It, it, it just came to me lovingly, wow. graciously. Um, and I have kept her vision I have tried to stay close to it. But then I went in and I started all my admin stuff. I set up rules, I set up mission, uh, and I did all that because um, I found our FCLL group and they led me through that whole process okay. of doing that. And so we've just organically grown. I haven't really done anything. <laughs> just the word has spread organically through um, quilters mentioning it and other groups and, and, uh, you know, Facebook mentioning it and offering it to people and, you know, and suggesting it. So it's, we're now over 30,000. Wow. That's more than 10 times. <laughs> so I think we reached eight, eight years this year. So I've grown it in five years from three to 30. Wow. Organically. <laughs> <laughs> How does that feel for you? It's, it's humbling. It's amazing. It's 
it, it just fills me with awe that these wonderful people all gather around this one specific thing. You know, it just so so that's what for me is is fascinating about your group because I'm I'm a member of lots of different quilt groups, but most of them have fairly broad conversations. I've mm -hmm. I've never found a group where it's just that one technique that that's all they talk about. Right. And and it makes your um your your timeline very visually rich because yeah. they, they all are related and look similar and have a, a similar look and feel. So, so mm -hmm. I find it amazing when I go into your group, I'm just like, oh, I salivate. When I'm, <laughs> when I'm scrolling through the posts, I'm like, oh my goodness, look at that. And every mm -hmm. single one is, is visually rich and gorgeous. Yes, uh, that's the magic of the technique. You, mm. every, and people can take the same fabric and come up with a, a hundred different ways to make it look beautiful. They're all mm. going to come out different. So mm. it's what keeps people coming back and doing it over and over and over again. Okay. So, and is it? A, we, just is we just recently had a poll in the group. One of our members is our poll poster. She does one like once a month, and she posted a poll last week on how many quilts our members made before they found this technique. And the majority of us had made a lot of quilts. And I commented, I wish I had known about this technique in the beginning, because then I wouldn't have had to make all those other ones. <laughs> I would have just been stuck with this. <laughs> you would you would never wanted to shop anywhere else anyway. Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you why do you feel that way about this particular technique? It's magical. It's magical. When it's not a pattern, it's a technique. So you don't need to follow a pattern. Um, it's it's one fabric. How simple is that? You don't have to shop and try to match fabrics. Mm. I think that was a hard thing for, that's mm. a hard thing for a lot of quilters to do, mm. to go in a quilt mm. shop with bolts and bolts and bolts of fabric and try to the cost. pull out. Um, well, it, I mean, it's very similar. You know, I mean, uh, you want to make a, a queen size quilt, you're still going to need a lot of fabric. Mm. Um, but the thing is, you don't need to find you know, eight different ones to make a quilt pattern. It's one fabric, you cut it all up and bam, there it is, you know? Yes, I was just thinking because I like to chase the sales. So I'd be able to find one fabric on sale. <laughs> exactly, yes, yes. That's why I tell everybody, go to the clearance bin if you don't, if you don't want to waste your big money because you think you're going to mess it up, which mm. you usually don't because it's pretty easy. But um, yeah, so back to the admin journey. Um, I think I lost some people along the way because they didn't like the focus. Um, so we've created an offshoot group to expand to other kaleidoscope. We didn't branch out totally, but we went to other kaleidoscope quilts. So okay. there's a niche for that too. So, okay, okay. Um, and, and when did you realize that you needed to create a separate group for that? Well, there was one earlier and then there was some tension between the head admins and 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 uh, there was yeah, a whole big drama story oh, mm -hmm. that spanned some time. Um, and then, cause that was one of our linked groups and mm -hmm. I just finally had to cut the cord with it and create our own. Okay. And so that's been, okay. that's been that's, really good. That's that's interesting. I've, I've had similar experiences in my, do you think maybe the textile groups are a little bit like clicky and bitchy? Um, I'm sure some of them can be. Um, I, I joined one really big one, um, Pat Sloan's. We know Pat from um, FCLL. And hers was much, much smaller back when I first found Facebook. Um, but it was like, like, like you said, just too much. It was too broad for me at, at the time. And so um, when I discovered this, it was like, boom, oh, it was like, I, I, my, my head got blinders on when I found this technique. <laughs> so. So, so how many quilts have you made using this technique so far? Um, I have some in progress, but finished um, 23. Wow. <laughs> some big, some little, 
I mean, I've got some the size of a piece of paper. Okay. You know, okay. And others okay. are, you know, could fit on a king size bed. So. So, so I have been an admiring and an aspiring quilter for a long time. And I've, I've resisted actually making a, a, a proper quilt. I do all sorts of artistic things that look like quilts, but aren't. Uh, and every time I watch you, because I was watching yesterday when you were re when you were arranging the different colors, mm -hmm. to, to, and I was like, oh, I want to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. See, a lot of the people that come, they enjoy the, the cutting and the sewing, but mm -hmm. when it comes to that part, they're like, oh, no. <laughs> Because they never were used to following a pattern, but mm. for somebody like you, who's who's used to that creative part, that's natural for you. So I would so love. Where, to see where I had a breakthrough moment when I was watching you yesterday was when you said that you want the the two blocks to hold hands, mm. because that is a similar principle that I use when I create my lino designs. So mm -hmm. if you want to create a tiled design that works, you need to plan focal points on the edges that when you turn the block yes. will hold hands in that same way. Yes. 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 Yeah. So, it's, a, it's a tough concept for me to, to, to get over to my members because they're, when we make these blocks, they're hexagons or like a kaleidoscope and everybody yes. wants to look at that center boom, that, that bloom in the center, but it's like, oh, it's those edges are also so important to look at. Yes. Yes, yes, because yeah. that's where, where you link everything. And also, so what's beautiful for me there is that visual linking of the colors across across the construction like that, you, you lose the hexagon shape visually mm -hmm. and it then becomes yeah. that beautiful flow. Blur, yes. It flow, oh. I call it the flow, because that's there's two things that I look at for a one block wonder, and that's um, the technique of layering and cutting and, and all that. But then there's the flow, those shapes touch each other and they flow together. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's my second key anyway. So, so look at us going off at a tangent. <laughs> oh yes. I, oh, I, how did I know we would. <laughs> so, um, what is what have been some of your biggest challenges with taking over? I mean, it must be interesting taking over a group from somebody else. Has, has she ever wanted it back? No. No. Okay. So it was a clean break. No. She and she's a member, and I still turn to her sometimes for um, creative advice. Um, her opinion, I still respect it. So she's like my honorary admin. Um, she's a member. She's in my my admin secret group. So she kind of still is behind the scenes knowing what's going on. Um, but yeah, she has moved on to other more creative outlets in her quilting. And okay. she she just does not have time to do admin stuff. That's not in her, what okay. she wants to do anymore. Okay, okay. Um, okay. So she, And she even my team says, oh my, my team, I have a team of five okay. around the world because we're global. And they're like, Kathy, we could not do what you do. So don't ever think we're going to want to take over from you. Even though I have it set right now that I'm the only admin just to protect myself. Mm. Um, so, so I actually have uh, the opposite scenario. I've set, I've got three or four trusted team members who are set as full admins. So that if anything happens to me, if I should... Uh, leave, die, end up in Facebook jail or anything like that, mm -hmm. they can operate fully autonomously without me. Yeah. So yeah, I had I had one. Um, she was admin with me for a while simply because um, I needed her to do the welcome post until I figured out how to use this new computer. Okay, but I, I kind of got that down now. So. Okay. <laughs> but I was worried that that um, if Facebook ever came and gave us sole admin some protection because we're not creators um i wanted to wanted it to show that yes i am the the one who is yes owning yes. or running this now yes um, yes yes i i think i think because of that legacy issue because you inherited the group from somebody else uh that that's actually the the it's it's uh, self-preservation to set it up that way i think it's very smart i think it's very smart yeah the, the, uh, yes 
my my group is is there's very 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 little drama in my group so um basically we're just doing the nuts and bolts running of the group we got the admin assist to help with the member requests and um stuff like so it's the the actual running of the group is pretty streamlined so mm -hmm. my mods really aren't doing a whole lot right now yes um and it, it just more falls on me to do all the organizing and which is always what i've done anyway you know getting the guides in in place and making sure topics get assigned and stuff mm -hmm. like that and what do you mm -hmm. use the guides for oh gosh a ton of stuff i've been i just added a whole bunch more recently too um i use them of course, to put the important group information um, and then um, tips. And I got I got them for because um, people like to search for fabric from specific designers. And I never had a way to do that before. Mm -hmm. So I made guides for that. I love you. And then, of course, that doesn't work if they don't tell me what I can only I can only work with what they give me text in their I'm trying to work on that is to get the members to put more information in their text in their post so what we've done is um we've got an admin assist setting that automatically declines any posts that have fewer than 10 characters or something so that prevents them from resharing content without wording and then the autoresponder we've attached to that says something along the lines of uh um we uh please tell us in words what upcycled resources you used in this project mm -hmm. uh we'd love to hear you know where where they came from yeah. so that we have an autoresponder handling that so our team doesn't have to right right well you're public and i'm private so there's a couple oh, different okay. things that are different there um but a lot of times they're really good about talking about their quilt that they're posting, but they're not giving us the specific information I need mm. to put it in a guide or give it a topic or, mm. you know, that that sort of thing. So I, I did that uh, graphic based on something you did, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's so, um, so I've got that. So if I, if I see a quilt that's really inspiring and I want to put it in a guide, I'll, I'll make a comment and I'll pop in that little graphic and I'll say, please add some information so I can use this to inspire others or something like that. Oh, fantastic. Um, and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't if they don't know how or, you know, which is another thing. I've got a lot of older ladies in my group probably aren't, you know, as a, as versed in using Facebook as, as others are. Mm. Don't even, you know, that they wouldn't know how to edit a post or didn't know they could. Mm. So I, I do a lot of educating that way as yes. well as, the the quilt educating yes That's i find that so thankful <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot of my members the one the one lady i talked to through how, just how to how to get her instagram address into a format that she could use it somewhere else you know on her phone so i just did some screenshots on my phone to show her how to find it mm -hmm. she was so excited and so thankful uh yeah. I, I do think that part of our role as community managers is educating users how to use the technology, especially because Facebook moves the platform around so often they need oh, help yes. navigating. Yes, I have a I have a post that's in my it's in my it's linked in my welcome area and also it's in the guides on how to use and navigate around Facebook and I as a matter of fact I just sat down night before last and went through all that one, it's full of links for each task. And I went through each of those task posts and had to update almost all of them mm. because of the Facebook changes that have come. Yes. And, yes. It, and then and then I get the new desktop layout last night. So now I get a chance. <laughs> Which is a surprise for you too. <laughs> so, it's like, oh, they keep us working. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I was like, all of the pictures that I've done to show people where the guides are, I made them for like 15 groups last week. I put them all mm -hmm. up and now they all, they all the pictures mean nothing. I have to go and retake yep. the screenshots and edit all of 
all of the you are not alone my friend <laughs> you are not alone <laughs> We finally get a, a, a street sign that points them in a direction and then they move the, they move the road. <laughs> oh boy. So so how do you how do you stay um resilient and excited? So we speak to a lot of community managers who who talk about burnout and they can't cope or they're getting pushed back from their members that they're not enjoying. You seem to to swim through all of that. How do you do that? I think because it's a very enjoyable group. They're very upbeat. There's no drama. They're creative. They're inspiring. Um, and I think the back of my mind just is always comparing my current experience to the experience I had when I learned adminning, which was in a gaming group. Okay. And that was like always drama, always technical, always, you know, okay. and, and it, I mean, I'm talking about back when we had hardly any tools yes. to work with. Yes. And we had to deal with drama and technology problems and porn showing up on the feed. And I mean, they're just, we just didn't have the tools to filter and to handle and to do all that. Yes. And I was learning how to admin at the same time I was learning how to use Facebook. Okay. Because I, I did, my daughter gave me an iPad as a gift. I found Facebook. Um, first thing I did was join a quilt group. And then I found a simple little lovely game and I found the, a group for it. And the admin of that group spotted me within weeks. <laughs> said, Would you like to join my admin team? Because I was just so chatty and happy and positive and, you know. And so, and she was from Australia and I'm here in New York. And so it was a challenge time-wise for her to teach me not only to admin, but I had to learn some Facebook stuff too. So it was, she just, she was my mentor. And it's funny because now through the help from FCLL, I have progressed so that now I'm turning around and I'm helping her. Oh, that's so she's learning she's learning some stuff from me and um we both left that gaming industry so she, now i'm running my quilt group and she's running her her butterflies and moths of australia which is her oh, passion and plants oh, wonderful um, oh, wonderful so we're both gaming doing something that, yes we're both doing something that fills our soul Okay. And I, and I think that's one key to not burning out is to find something that, that just fills that spot in your soul. Yes, you know? definitely. Definitely. So you've mentioned FCLL a few times uh, and for everybody watching, if you don't know what F FCLL is, it's Facebook community learning labs, uh, which is a program that Facebook actually runs where they support uh community managers with mentorship and information about new features that we can expect uh, to roll out in the future. So um, Kathy and I are both members of FCLL communities. Uh, so Kathy, will you, could you maybe tell us, how do you feel that FCLL has changed how you manage your community? Oh, it's given me more, more information. Um, it, giving me a little heads up on on these tools that they shoot out because if I didn't have them I'd be like what the heck was that what is it how do I use it now I get a little bit of um insight um yes. I love yes. being able to you know test some things yes um and just just knowing um the the the, the other community managers like yourself and um I mean I've been with that group since almost day one and um just the the support that we give each other and not, yes. not just the support we get from facebook um to know that yeah they sometimes it doesn't feel like it but yeah they're listening to us and and um we're playing a part in helping the whole thing move forward yes so yes, yes. do you feel they're listening to us um I, I do, 
and I don't. Okay. <laughs> I think it goes so far and then. <laughs> <laughs> and then somewhere along the, somewhere along the line, more important things are coming down from above. <laughs> you know how organizations work but it is what it is you know it's like we because i was thinking this you know it's like where else am i gonna go you know it's like there is you know especially for my age group which is um the majority of my 99 percent of my group is women and yes. probably 75 or more percent of those are over 55 yes so um for for my age group, Facebook is what we're used to and it's what we primarily use. So, I mean, I've thought off and on over the years about moving into like Instagram and, and stuff, but it's like, I don't think the majority of my people would, would go there with me. Yes, yes. So. I, I think Facebook's strength is that people in that age group are using Facebook anyway to connect with their grandchildren, particularly if their children live overseas. Yeah. Uh, I know that's certainly that's certainly true here in South Africa. Uh, so I think that a lot of people are are using Facebook in that way. So they're already on the platform. You know, they're not mm -hmm. they're not using YouTube or other platforms. They're already on the Facebook platform. Uh, yep. so anything that we can bring them there uh, is much better than trying to move them off platform where they've now got to do a different login and now remember a, a new password and all that stuff. It's just too many hoops. Yeah. To yeah. Plus, plus my memory is not as good as it used to be. So uh, for me, for growing my group and working with my group, if, if I can just concentrate on using the new tools that Facebook is giving me, to, yeah. to do yeah. all that instead of like, okay, I got this on Facebook. I got this over on Instagram. I got this going on YouTube. It's like uh, my head would explode. So, um, and I think that's one of the advantages I had from FCLL was to, to get a little bug. And it's like, okay, I'll just be patient and wait to see what comes and how, how to use what's coming. Yes. Um, yes. So, you know, like that. New thing I got to try with Linda last night. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> what did you try? Get, get it in my group and try it. <laughs> what did you try with Linda last night? Um, it's called audio audio group or audio chat. What was it audio chat? It was an audio chat. But we could turn on video, so we could do video too. Okay. We had just fun playing with it, and I got something that gets left open. It's like an audio room that is left open all the time so that members can pop in and out and talk to each other and okay hey anybody here I got a question you know that kind of thing oh lovely I, I I I've got a button this week that's popped up I don't know if you've seen it but I'm able to download videos that I've created in Facebook that I've streamed into Facebook I'm able to download out again and save them which is new Oh, on the computer, I haven't, I haven't noticed because <laughs> I have probably because I haven't made too many videos. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Although not I did my first reel last night. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm wondering because it's a suggestion I made in FCLL if they really are listening and if the switch is specially for me to test out whether other people have it yet. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. I said I did my first like reel last night, my real reel. And how did I it go? We'll try. Um, I checked this morning. I've got over 500 views already. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I think probably mostly my group, but yes, 500. I mean, I post. I it posts onto my timeline. Yes. And then I shared it into my group. Yes. Which yes. didn't work the first time. I had to do it twice. Okay. Yes, I'm um, finding I'm doing really well creating the visuals in Canva, and then I just drop the the sound in the audio, in the real app. Yeah, I just use the Facebook thing. Yes, just as my first kind of try, but it's like yeah. okay, so that it worked, but not as not like I really wanted it. So I think yeah. next time I have to to get um, a whole separate text 
graphic to pop in so that the text isn't covering all the pictures all the time. Yes. Yes. Kind of like what you do. Yes. Yes. So I'll yeah. figure it out. So Kathy, I see we are almost out of time. And uh already <laughs> I'm sure there's like 20 things we haven't talked about that we should have. <laughs> so that means you're open to you're open to a sequel. Sure. Okay, fantastic. Think, yeah, because so you know there's more stuff we need to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, so, so on the YouTube channel, I'm actually, so one of the reasons I'm housing these videos on YouTube and not on Facebook is so that I can create some playlists um, around specific conversations and, and we can see how people grow and change uh, and how the, con you know, we, re we revisit uh, topics from, from previous conversations we've mm -hmm. had. So I would yeah. love, love, love to create a series with you. That would be awesome. Oh, that would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> just say right. any admins out there, just use use the tools Facebook gives you and play with them and have fun. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> You're doing a fantastic job, Kathy. I love your group. I love the organizing tools. Those are my favorite. Because yes. I, you know, I was a secretary, so organizing is my my thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I totally love the organizing tools also. Yeah. All right, so thank you to everybody who has spent time with us today watching. Uh, if you have any questions about community management, please will you leave them in the comments below. And I will leave contact information for both Kathy and myself in the description of this video so that you can reach out to us if you want to directly. Have a beautiful day.